How much magnesium should you take in a day? This is a very common question that I get from a lot of people. And the answer isn't just a straightforward, clear cut answer that I can just give. I wish it was, but everyone's an individual. Everyone has different degrees of demands of magnesium. People have different um, excretion rates. Some people are more deficient than others. So they need actually a higher loading dose to get them into a um, optimal state than others do. And so I'll share what I do personally, but um, don't copy me. You have to find what works for you. And I always advise working with a healthcare practitioner to do that. So I start my day off with magnesium because it's the most important mineral in my opinion, and I don't want to forget it. So when I wake up, I have two of a blended magnesium. This is Magplex Ultra, the one I'm taking now. It's malate and glycinate. I typically take that with my water while the coffee's brewing. Then I have one cup of coffee. In my collagen, my collagen is actually contains a little bit of magnesium because magnesium is a cofactor for hydroxylation of collagen protein. So it's another great thing to add. Um, so in the morning with my multivitamin, my magnesium product, the collagen, all together, three or 400 milligrams, okay? Um, throughout the day, I might drink some water that's mineral rich. This is a brand that I like called Crazy Water. It's got about 40 milligrams of magnesium, which is great. It's got a little bit of calcium too. It's almost in a two to one ratio, which is what I recommend. Um, if I'm really out exercising, if it's hot, I might take some electrolytes. This is Jigsaw Health. I like this product. They taste great. And at night, I always do this. I take magnesium glycinate powder at night. I'll sometimes mix the electrolytes with it. The powder contains about 300 milligrams. If I've had a really stressful day, if it's just been you know really hectic and I need to really calm my nervous system down, I might take that and also magnesium l 3 8 because magnesium l 3 8 is more designed to penetrate the blood-brain barrier a little bit better. Um, so I love that for calming down the nervous system, getting to the brain a little bit easier. If it's been really hectic, I might even take an Epsom salt bath. So all in all from supplements, I'm averaging about 800 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams daily. That's not even counting food sources of magnesium, and I always advise eating magnesium-rich foods. Now that may seem like a lot, but I test my levels. And my levels are still not exactly where I want, want them to be. When I test my serum magnesium, is a little bit lower than the optimal 2.2 to 2.5 that I advise in my book. But my RBC magnesium was still climbing which where it was, but I still want that a little bit higher. So I always say test, don't guess, figure out where you are. But you should also be looking at your signs and symptoms. Are you deficient in magnesium? Have you looked at all these things that might be a sign that you're deficient in magnesium? In my book, I go over lab ranges. I go over what to look for, signs and symptoms of magnesium deficiency. Um, I go over what depletes magnesium so you get a better framework of uh, what's happening in your own body. Typically what's recommended for the recommended dietary allowance, which you see on a lot of uh, food and supplement products, um, is 420 milligrams for men, 350 to 360 for women. That is for a healthy individual. Okay, that does not take into play you know, body weights that are drastically higher than when the RDAs were established, you know, 20, 25 years ago. Um, so that needs to change. It doesn't uh, account for whether you have a metabolic uh, disease that demands more magnesium to get over that. It doesn't say if you're def highly deficient in magnesium, what you should do. So in, in my book, I go over all of this, what to look for, more of the optimal range of magnesium intake we should be getting from food, water, and supplements. Um, so if you have questions on magnesium, this is for you because this is going to help you tailor a plan around magnesium that can keep you in optimal levels for life. Um, work with a practitioner is always a great thing to do. And always, if you're trying a new supplement, even if it's magnesium, that's very safe. Magnesium is very hard to get toxic levels if you have normal bowel and kidney function. But again, always work with a practitioner because so many different things, um, it's just a good idea because from certain medications, you might not know that there might be a drug uh, nutrient interaction. I do go over that in my book, but always a book's not going to satisfy a doctor. So work with a practitioner, find what works for you, find what helps you keep in magnesium balance. I'm Dr. Robert Fredrickson. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe to my channel and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.